Dr. Murphy. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for uh, being here today. Um, well, Senator Cassidy is still here. Let me just put a plug in for um, uh, the Mental Health Reform Act that we both worked on in uh, consultation with the chair and ranking member that passed in 2016. Um, and uh, as, um, uh, as part of uh, that piece of legislation, uh, we included some um, pretty important changes to the mental health parity law, which uh, allow uh, for federal regulators to make sure that uh, insurance companies are not just putting in their statement of benefits your uh, behavioral health and addiction um, uh, benefit, but that they are also administering your benefit in a way that is not discriminatory. Um, I wanted to maybe direct this question to you, Mr. Morrison. Um, Secretary Acosta came before President Trump's Opioid Commission um, and talked about um, the lack of tools that he has in order to enforce this requirement under federal law that when you have insurance, you have an equal addiction benefit uh, to your non-addiction benefits. Uh, the reality is that anybody out there who's tried to access insurance reimbursement knows that it is a whole lot harder uh, to get an insurance company to pay for addiction treatment than it is to fix your broken leg uh, or to address heart disease. Um, and so uh, the mental health parity law. I think there are. I think there's been studies, as you referred to, in terms of accessing the benefit. There have been a look at accessing substance use disorder benefits as opposed to physical benefits, and there have been challenges and barriers. Our members know this issue based on folks that they see are uninsured or underinsured, and so they've worked with state health insurance commissioners, plans, and the like to educate them. But the bottom line is we have a law in the books and resources to help enforce and implement the law would be helpful. And the Governor's Association has included that as part of their recommendations, as has the commission um, that the president uh, convened under Governor Christie. Well, uh, Senator Alexander, we're, we're, we're lining up requests uh, um, as we go through this hearing, but uh, one of mine would be that we take uh, a look at these authorities that the Secretary has asked for that are actually included in President Trump's commission's recommendations to us. Um, if, we have um, new reports that we've been given showing um, that there is just a unjustifiable disparity in terms of how insurance companies reimburse on the addiction side and the non-addiction side. Uh, and uh, we have a Republican administration asking for some new authorities, I think some, some, some common sense authorities, and I hope that we can talk about that. Um, another subject I wanted to bring up um, to the panel is um, the subject of recovery coaches. I think, again, Mr. Morrison, you referenced it in your testimony. We've had a lot of success in Connecticut with uh, recovery coaches. We've seen uh, an increase across the country in emergency room uh, visits for opioid overdoses uh, by 30 percent. Um, and, and, you know, I've had so many people in Connecticut talk to me about um, how we need to lengthen out the spend uh, on addiction, treat it more like a chronic disease uh, than simply a crisis illness. And recovery coaches um, are one of the ways to do that. And so I, I'm maybe going to ask a question to you, Ms. Nickel, because it's already in your testimony, Mr. Morris. So you talked about the need to get parents and family members um, more involved and have policy um, that facilitates them being part of this conversation. And it seems to me that recovery coaches is a way to do that, to have somebody who can, um, you know, be that liaison, but also bring in the family members. Just wanted to sort of ask your thought on, um, you know, whether it's worthwhile. We, I, Senator Capito and I have two pieces of legislation that would do this. Just wanted to ask your opinion on this. Absolutely. Addiction is a family disease. It affects every member of the family. Um, and peer recovery support specialists, recovery coaches can play an integral role in making sure that long-term plan is in place. We also know from literature that um, treatment and recovery plans need to be three to five years long, not 14 days, not 28 days. Um, so you think about you have a, a hip replacement and you know what that my grandma had one last, last year. You have the recovery plan on the things that you need. It's the same with treatment for addiction, and we know that we need a much longer runway for the recovery support to make sure that that patient is well and, uh, and has the services they need. Such a hard problem because we need to spend more money, but we do need to be having a conversation about how we're spending the money today, whether it's best served as we primarily do today in intensive supports right up front or whether we need to lengthen out that spend. Recovery coaches is a way to do that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.